Fellas, this is a list of some hot takes that I've got surrounding the UFC, some takes and opinions that I've got that the majority of MMA fans don't seem to be on board with and just don't seem to agree with. So I'm going to be discussing some of my hot takes surrounding the current state of the UFC. Obviously, you lot can let me know if you agree with these takes or if you disagree. But we'll go in there with the first take that I've got, and it is surrounding Leon Edwards versus Bilal Muhammad. And specifically, I don't think Leon Edwards versus Bilal Muhammad is going to be as boring as people are making it out to be. Now, I'm not going to sit here and say that it's going to be like Gaethje versus Holloway level or Chandler versus Oliveira level. It's just not going to be that. But people are making it out as if it's going to be the next Nama Yunes versus Esparza. I actually think Leon versus Bilal is going to be quite an interesting fight. People have just seen the fact that Bilal and Leon separately have quite uneventful fights. And now they've tied that to those two themselves is going to be in an un going to be in an uneventful fight first reason look at the first fight they had it was actually quite a fun fight it was Bala Muhammad pushing a pace Leon Edwards piecing up Bala Muhammad and it actually made for quite an interesting fight and I feel like this time around it's going to be interesting as well Bala Muhammad ain't going to be doing the, what Colby Covington did he ain't going to be backing up he's going to be pushing a pace he's been calling for the title shot for how, however many years now um, and Bala Muhammad pushes a pace in every fight so it ain't going to be like he's backing up and Leon's going to be lekking him to a decision Bilal's going to make Leon work on top of that you look at the guys where Bala Muhammad is having boring fights. Bala Muhammad is having boring fights when he is dominating people. Like he did against Wonderboy and Luke or whatever. He has boring fights when he absolutely dominates people. That ain't going to happen against Leon. Leon's been facing grapplers a lot recently with Corby and Usman. And I don't think Bala Muhammad's going to dominate Leon with his uh, grappling. And when on the feet, mate, Leon is going to absolutely piece up Bala Muhammad on the feet. So I actually think he's going to be quite an interesting fight based on their styles and from what we've seen the first time around. Mate, it's going to be 6am. The crowd are going to be chanting, um, you know, against Bilal Muhammad, they're going to want to see Bilal Muhammad's head come clean off. I think the intensity is going to be high. I think Bilal's going to be pushing a pace, and I think Leon's going to go out there and piece up Bilal Muhammad. And Bilal Muhammad is going to be pushing a pace as well. And I think it's going to actually make for quite an interesting fight again. I'm not saying it's going to be fight of the year or fight of the night because I don't think either of those guys are capable of doing that. But I think this whole narrative that it's going to be one of the worst fights of the year, I just don't agree with that narrative. So that's my first take, and it is that Leon versus Bilal is not going to be as boring as people are making it out to be. People have just seen that they have separate fights that don't seem to be that interesting, and now they think that both of them are going to be having boring fights as well. The only reason this is going to be a boring fight is if Bilal Muhammad takes Leon down, and suddenly Leon Edwards' takedown defense has gone out the window, and it's just Bilal Muhammad holding Leon down for five rounds. That's the only way I see it being a boring fight. Or if Bilal Muhammad refuses refuses to shoot a takedown and it's just Leon Edwards leg kicking Muhammad to a decision. Those are the only circumstances where I see this being a boring fight. But apart from that, I think it's going to be pretty interesting. So that's my first hot take. My next hot take, and it also involves Leon Edwards. And I think that Leon Edwards beats Islam Makachev. Now, for some reason, this is now considered a hot take because ever since Makachev beat Dustin Poirier, people seem to think that Makachev now is going to beat Leon Edwards. I'm still, listen, this isn't just British bias, right? I'm not just saying this because I'm trying to back an Englishman. I actually think Leon Edwards would beat uh, Islam Makachev. And I know I picked Poirier to beat Makachev as well, but that was more of an emotional pick, you know, oh, Hail Mary pick, maybe Poirier can get it done. This isn't an emotional pick. This is a logical pick. I honestly think that Leon Edwards would beat Islam Makachev in, a Uf in an MMA fight, and I don't think that should be classed as a hot take. First reason, he's a much bigger guy than what Islam's been facing recently. He's had two fights with Volkanovski, one of them being the hardest fight of his career, and then the other one's been Poirier and Oliveira. 145ers and 155ers, what's his name? Leon Edwards is a big 170 pounder. Like, not only is he 170, but he's a big one at that. He ain't no Kobe Covington who could easily make 155. Leon's a big welterweight, which obviously has the big size advantage and strength advantage over Makachev already. Second of all, it's stylistically a problem for Islam Makachev. Leon's been facing grapple after grapple after grapple. He's faced Usman twice in a row, and then he goes out there and faces Kobe Covington. And if he beats Bala Muhammad, that's another grappler that he's faced. So we don't like Islam Makachev is showing is, is showing Leon Edwards a completely new style to what he's used to. And then on the feet, I know Makachev's a really good striker, but Leon's one of the most technical strikers in the UFC. He ain't going to be engaging in a brawl with Makachev. He's going to be uh, making it a technical fight on the feet. And I think... I'm not saying it would be an absolutely dominant win to Leon Edwards. I think they both have their moments. But I think at the end of the five rounds, I'm confidently saying that Leon Edwards would beat uh, Islam Makachev. And I don't think that should be classed as a hot take. But I don't know why Makachev beating Dustin Poirier suddenly makes people think that Makachev would beat Leon Edwards. That There's no correlation there. One's 155, one's 170. One's a striker, one's more well-rounded. I don't see the correlation there. Um, again, I'm not saying that it's impossible for Makachev to beat Leon Edwards. But I would logically say that Leon Edwards has 
the upper hand against Islam Makachev based on most factors right now. So that's another apparently a hot take that I've got now because most people don't seem to agree with that take. And on the topic of Islam Makachev, another hot take that I've got is that Islam Makachev doesn't get hit because of him. It's more of his fan base. I don't think we've got a reason to hate Islam Makachev besides him beating our favourite fighters. He's a humble guy. He's a respectful guy. And he's an entertaining fighter. I think he's finished seven out of his last eight. And that one that went to a decision with the fight was the fight of the year in 2023. Makachev is not a boring fighter at all. And I think the only reason he gets hit is because his fan base warrants that. Same with Pereira as well. Pereira's a nice guy. He's a fun guy to watch, but his fan base is delusional. And Makachev and Khabib fans and a lot of these Dagestani fans, they just seem to be really annoying. You know, the second that Makachev beats a fan favorite in Poirier or Volkanovsky, they seem to be flooding the comment section trying to rub it in people's faces. And they seem to have really selective memory. They don't like to bring up the fact when Shamil Gaziev quit in the corner against Rosa Strike. They don't like to bring up Magomed Ankalaev tapped to Paul Craig and submitted to Paul Craig. They don't like to remember that. And they just seem to be really like, or in your face as if as if it's like a really hot take to pick Islam Makachev to win. And they just seem to have this big obsession. And I've come to the conclusion that a lot of Islam Makachev and Khabib fans aren't actually fans of MMA. They're just fans of Islam and Khabib specifically. So they know what Islam and Khabib have done. They're going to talk about them a lot, but they don't really seem to know anything else outside of those two guys. So Islam Makachev's fan base might be the most irritating fan base in the UFC. And I feel like that's why a lot of people seem to troll Makachev and seem to really troll these Dagestani fighters when they lose. It's nothing to do with the fighters themselves because the fighters don't really say anything. It's the fan base that, that, that speaks for them. That is what makes these Dagestani fighters get so much hate, in my opinion anyway. And then the next take, now this is going to be a bit of a long one, but I think to fight for a belt in a different division, you must be eligible to fight for an immediate rematch if you lose your belt. Let me say it again. To fight for a belt in a different division, you must be eligible to get an immediate rematch in your own division. Now, for an example of this, Alexander Volkanovsky. If Alexander Volkan if Alexander Volkanovsky, let's say, was to lose a decision to Yaya Rodriguez, he would be warranted an immediate rematch because he's been in the division for so long and defending the belt. And he could also fight for a belt in a different weight class in the lightweight division, which he did. So I think basically what I'm trying to say is the criteria for being able to get an immediate rematch, let's say that's three or four defences, that should be the same criteria to fight for a belt in a different division. In other words, if you've got like one defence, you shouldn't be able, in my opinion, like if you aren't eligible to be getting an immediate rematch if you lose your belt, you shouldn't be able to fight for a belt in a different weight class. What I'm saying is you should have at least four or five defences before you start challenging for a belt in a different weight class because it seems like it's a big trend nowadays. The second a UFC champion wins their belt, they want to fight a guy in a different division when they've only had like one or two defences. And in my opinion, unless you're getting, unless you're, you've been defending so long to the point where you're now able to get an immediate rematch for the belt when you lose it, I don't think you should be able to fight for a belt in a different division. That's another hot take that I've got because I've just got to get it on my chest. Champions nowadays seem to be wanting to fight for a belt in a different weight class all the time. And it's just kind of frustrating. The next hot take I've got is that UFC Whitaker versus Chmaev at Saudi Arabia is better than UFC 301 and UFC 302. Now, UFC 301, it wasn't that bad of a card on paper. It actually, no, no, it, it was bad on paper, but it didn't perform that badly. But I think Whitaker versus Chimaev is better than both of these. I mean, the main event, Robert Whitaker versus Hamzat Chimaev, a potential number one contender fight, one of the most interesting fights I've seen in the middleweight division for the longest time. That is a super fun fight between Whitaker and Chimaev right there. And then you look at the UFC 301, we had Pantoja versus Urseg in the main event, Aldo Martinez, um, Anthony Smith versus Vito Petrino. Dude, we've got Sergei Pavlovich versus Alexander Volkov. One of the best fights in heavyweight right now. Kelvin Gastelum versus D-Rod. Mohamed Naimov versus... Well, he's now moved to the main card. He weren't there before, but Sharputin Magomedov, one of the most interesting kickboxers in the UFC. He's now on the main card. Johnny Walker versus Volkan Uzdemir as well. And they even like the prelims about as well. They've got really good prelims as well. Nazrat Hakparas versus Jared Gordon. Rinat's on the card as well. Farid Bashrat. What I'm trying to say is UFC Whitaker Chimaev might be one of the best fight nights I have seen ever. I mean, the Alman Sarukin versus Benil Darius, that was a really good fight night as well, but this one might top it. This is such a stacked fight night, and I think it has potential to be better than UFC 302, because UFC 302 had a really good main event and everything. The core main event was terrible. The rest of the card was pretty terrible as well. There wasn't a single knockout on the entire card, and I think Whitaker versus Chmaev, it's stacked on paper, and you know what? I wouldn't even be mad if this was a pay-per-view. I know it would probably be a lower quality pay-per-view, but this is honestly, in my opinion, better than 301 on paper, and has more potential 
scheduled to beat uh, UFC 302 in the way it performs. So that's another hot take I've got. It's a really, really good fight night, and I think it's better than the past two pay-per-views we've had, to be completely honest. And then the final hot take I've got, it might be a bit of a weird one, but I think that fat heavyweights would be two times better if they were in shape. Now, you look at the, the top 10 of the heavyweight division, and it, they're all athletic, like Tom Aspinall, Cyril Garn, Sergey Pavlovich, Alexander Volkov, Jelton Almeida, Curtis Blades. A lot of these guys seem to be really athletic or fairly in shape heavyweights. And then the second you get out like the top 10 and the top 15, that's where all the fat heavyweights start piling up. And obviously it could be a thing of skill, but I would be led to like led to believe that a lot of these fat heavyweights would honestly have the ability to be in the top 10 rankings if they were in shape. Um, a good example of this, Mick Parkin. Mick Parkin, he trains with Tom Aspinall. He's got really good fight IQ. He's light on his feet. Um, he's got fairly fast hands. Um, he's great grappling as well. Good fight IQ. But the one thing that's letting this guy down is the fact that he's out of shape. It, you know, he's a, it, him, that, him being out of shape definitely, you know, it, it takes a hit to his performance. And I can only think if Mick Parkin was in shape, this dude would have potential to be a, a ranked heavyweight. And I feel like that for a lot of the heavyweights. A lot of them are just undisciplined middleweights. Like, they just carry an unnecessary amount of body fat and for the ones that you know are really really big if they were just in shape i honestly think they'd have potential because i don't think it's necessarily a skill thing i think it's also a fact that they're just they're unathletic they're not in good shape their gas tank is horrible and if a lot of them just took it a little bit seriously I think a lot of them would have potential to be climbing the ranking. So that's another hot take I've got between the fat heavyweights. And that is my hot takes around the UFC right now. Some based on cards, some based on individual fighters. But let me know your thoughts on these hot takes in this video. If you agree or disagree with them. And uh, thank you for watching.